Redstone calculators are some of the most amazing Minecraft builds ever made. From the first ones in Minecraft beta to the powerful ones we see now, redstone calculators have always been super impressive. But have you ever noticed that they're all kind of the same? Sure, they're all built a bit differently, and some have different operations than others, but in general, most have the same format. Pick two numbers, pick an operation, and get the result. That's it. That's pretty different from most calculators in real life. On the Windows calculator, for example, you don't just pick two numbers. You can type in way more than that and use all kinds of fancy features. So over the past few weeks, I made this. The first redstone calculator that actually feels like a real one. You can type in super long expressions, use parentheses, and continuously do operations. I had a lot of fun with this project and I'm really excited to show you how it works. You're gonna love this video. And make sure to stick around till the end for a really big announcement. When I first started this project, I spent a lot of time trying to decide how it should work. Should it give the cumulative answer as you type, or should it only do that when you press equals? Should it have parentheses, variables, trig functions? And after a lot of thinking, this was my final plan. The user will start by typing in any expression using these characters. 0 through 9, plus, minus, multiply, divide, left parenthesis, or right parenthesis. For example, they can type in 1 times 2, plus 3 times 4. When they press equals, it'll replace the expression with the answer. Then if they want to do more with the answer, they can type times 3 for example, press equals again, and it'll be replaced again, and they can repeat that as many times as they want. If they ever want to start over, they can just press clear, and it'll go back to zero. I felt like this plan was simple enough to not completely overwhelm me while still being the fanciest redstone calculator that I've ever seen. In typical redstone builds, numbers are represented using binary integers. With 4 bits, this would mean that the number 9 is represented as 1001, or 7 would be 0111. The problem with using integers though is division. 1 divided by 2 for example is 0.5, which is not an integer. In my past builds, I actually found a trick to get around this sometimes. Say the user types in 1 divided by 3 and you want to give two decimal places of accuracy. I'd multiply the numerator by 100, perform an integer division of 100 over 3, and then just place a fake decimal point on the screen. So it calculates 33, but the user sees it as 0.33. Behind the scenes, this only uses integers. But for this project, a trick like that wasn't going to work. Because what if after getting 0.33, the user wants to type plus 1? What does the calculator do then? I realized that if I wanted the calculator to reuse the answer, I needed a representation that would allow me to store decimals. For that, there are basically two popular options, floating point and fixed point. Floating point is used in virtually all computers. It's kind of like scientific notation, but in binary. Some of the bits are for the exponent, and some of the bits are for the mantissa, which is a fraction. Then a formula is used to calculate what it actually represents. Fixed point on the other hand just means that there's a fixed decimal point somewhere in the number. For example, you could have an 8-bit fixed point number with the decimal point in the middle. This would give you 4 integer bits, 8, 4, 2, and 1, and 4 fractional bits. 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 sixteenth. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 in this notation is 1 plus a fourth, or 1.25. Weighing these two options, I decided to use fixed point for its simplicity. Specifically, I decided to represent all numbers in redstone with 16.16-bit fixed point. So this would be 5, and this would be 7.125. I also decided to add a decimal point to the list of characters you can type. That way you could type things like 0.33 right away. Now that I had a basic idea of what I was doing, I hopped into Minecraft and started building. I started by making a custom font for the characters, with each one being 3x5 pixels. Usually I choose a bigger font, but I wanted to be able to squeeze as many as possible on the screen. I also gave each character a 5-bit code so that I could refer to them more easily. 0 through 9 are just 0 through 9, and the rest of the characters start at 16 and up. I did this on purpose so that I could tell if something is a digit by just looking at the leftmost bit. Then I made a small ROM to hold all the different characters. When you put in the code here, it uses a decoder to access that character and plot the pixels to the display. So if you put in 4, you get 4. Or if you put in 17, you get the plus sign. Then I duplicated the display a bunch of times and built a shift register for the characters. So when you type something, it shifts everything else over and puts the new character on the right. Typing 1 puts a 1 on the right. Then typing 2 shifts the 1 over and puts the 2 on the right. And so on and so on. I also made a nice user interface because I doubt people want to type in binary codes. This is a keypad with the digits 0 through 9, and then these are all the other characters. When you press a button, the circuit behind it converts it to the character code. If you press left parentheses, for example, you can see it comes out as 10101. That code gets sent to the screen, and it gets typed. And yeah, it's the same idea for any of the other buttons. Now I could type in any expression and see it on the display, but the redstone itself was still pretty dumb. If you typed in 12.5 plus 13, all it saw was 12.5 plus 13. It didn't know what 12.5 or 13 actually were. 
I needed it to recognize these numbers and convert them to their fixed point values so I could actually do the calculation with them. In other words, I needed to convert a stream of characters to the corresponding stream of tokens, where a token is either a number, an operator, or a parenthesis. So here was my plan. If the user types a digit or a decimal point, then I know they're currently typing a number. They might be finished with it, but they also might not, so I can't create the token yet. Instead, I'll just hold the number in this box. If the user types a non-digit character, they must be finished with the previous number. So I'll convert the box to the real fixed point, output it, and then output the character. This seemed like it would work pretty well. The only weird thing about it is that if your expression ends in a digit, you have to send one extra character to make sure it gets outputted. But I wasn't too worried about that, I could just type an invisible character at the end when the user presses equals. So naturally, my next goal was to make this box in Minecraft, a circuit that can convert from a list of digits to an actual fixed point value. To do this, I decided to convert the integer part and the fractional part separately. For the integer part, I made this circuit. It works by inputting the integer one digit at a time and keeping a running total. For example, let's convert the list 1, 2, 3, or 123. First input 1, and the total updates to 1. Then input 2, and it multiplies the 1 by 10 and adds 2, giving you 12. Then input 3, and it multiplies the 12 by 10 and adds 3, giving you 123. And what's really cool is there's no actual multiplier here. The multiply by 10 is done using only shifting. Then for the fractional part, I made this circuit. Instead of keeping a running total, this circuit uses a completely different algorithm. I put it in the description if you want to check it out. For example, let's convert 0 0.1875. Input 1, 8, 7, 5, and convert, and you get 0 0.0011, which is exactly right. So now with these two circuits combined, I could convert any number to fixed point. Now that I had the box, I built the rest of the wiring for tokenization, and I gave it some basic tests. I started with 12 plus 3.4, which didn't work at all because I missed a single redstone dust. But when I tried again, it worked. It made three tokens, 12 plus 3.4. Then I went to try 12 minus 3.4, but before I even saw if it worked, I realized a big problem. The minus sign has two possible meanings. Sometimes it's subtraction between two numbers, but other times it's just making the number in front of it negative. These two operations are called binary subtraction and unary subtraction. Note that this has nothing to do with the binary number system, they're just called this because it involves two numbers and one number. So to solve this, I split the minus sign into two separate tokens. And to distinguish between the two, I realized that I could just check the character to the left of it. If there's a digit or a right parenthesis, then it's binary subtraction. Otherwise, it's unary. For example, in this expression, the first minus sign has a digit to the left, so it's binary subtraction, and the second minus doesn't, so it's unary subtraction. Once the redstone for that was built, I went ahead and tested it more, and it worked great. Putting in 1 minus 2 gave 1, binary subtract, 2, and putting in 1 plus minus 2 gave 1 plus unary subtract, 2. And with that, tokenization was completely done. I even tried a super long expression, and it worked perfectly. Now that I had a nice list of tokens, it was time to figure out how to actually evaluate it. If you remember from school, the standard way to evaluate an expression like this is called PEMDAS. Parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication and division from left to right, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. For example, in this expression, you start with what's in the parentheses, 4 plus 3 is 7, then exponents, 3 squared is 9, then multiplication and division from left to right, 14 over 7 is 2, times 9 is 18, then addition and subtraction from left to right, 1 plus 18 is 19, minus 2 is 17. Now my calculator didn't have exponents, but regardless, using PEMDAS felt like a great idea. It's what people expect, and it's how most real-life calculators work. I think people would be confused if I did anything else. So I started designing a PEMDAS circuit. But as I kept working on it, the design was getting more and more and more complicated, and it seemed like I was making this way harder than it needed to be. So to try to get some inspiration, I looked online to see how actual calculators do this, and I found an amazing algorithm to help me out. Let me explain. The reason why a PEMDAS circuit is so hard is mainly because of the way we write expressions. We use infix notation, which means operators are in between the two numbers. This leads to expressions like this, where if you want to evaluate it, you have to keep track of lots of things at once and then put them all together like a puzzle. But infix isn't the only way to write expressions. In postfix notation, the operators come after the two numbers instead. 1 plus 2 becomes 1, 2 plus. Now usually there's no reason to actually use postfix, but in the case of this project, it has some really nice properties. For one, there are no parentheses. Take 1 plus 2 times 3 in normal infix for example. 
If you put the parentheses here, then the postfix expression is 1, 2 plus 3 times. 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. But if you put the parentheses here, then the postfix is 1, 2, 3 times plus. 2 times 3 is 6, and 1 plus 6 is 7. Because of the way postfix gets evaluated, the order of operations is implicit, so parentheses aren't necessary. Postfix always has exactly one unambiguous answer when you evaluate it. And speaking of evaluation, there's a really easy way to evaluate any postfix expression, using just a stack. This is the entire algorithm. Read the expression from left to right. If it's a number, push it to the stack. Otherwise, do the operation to the top of the stack, pop them, and push the result. For example, let's evaluate 1 plus parentheses 2 times 3, or 1, 2, 3 times plus in postfix. Starting on the left, 1 is a number, so push it to the stack. 2 is a number, push it. 3 is a number, push it. Times is an operation, so do it to the top two numbers, pop them, and push the result. Plus is also an operation, so do it to the top two, pop them, and push. Whatever's left in the stack at the end is the final result. In our case, 7. After learning all of this, it was pretty clear that postfix was the answer. If I could just convert the expression to postfix, then the evaluation would be really straightforward. So I tried to find the best algorithm to do this, and after looking at a few different options online, I decided to use the shunning yard algorithm. The idea of shunning yard is to convert from infix to postfix using a three-way junction. That's where the name comes from because it's like a railway shunning yard. The infix expression starts over here on the right. If a number token comes along, it'll go straight to the output. Otherwise, it'll store it in the other track until it's time to come out. By the end, the postfix expression is completed on the left. And what's really cool about shunning yard is that it takes PEMDAS into account. So if you put in something like 1 plus 2 times 3, it knows that multiplication comes before addition, and it'll create the postfix accordingly. Or even if you put in something with parentheses, it knows how to do that too. The full algorithm gets kind of complex, so if you want to learn about it, check out the links in the description, or just search for it online. The main point is that using just a three-way junction and some rules, shunning yard can convert any infix expression to postfix. So once I fully understood shunning yard, I started making it in redstone. This is an example of when I was first playing around with three-way junctions. Turns out they're actually kind of easy to make if you just spam repeater locks. There are three buttons hooked up to this. One to push the character to the output, one to push the character to the other track, and one to put the track back to the output. So if you pretend that this is one plus two, then with these buttons, you can push the one to the output, push the plus to the other track, push the two to the output, and then take the plus out. Once I was able to do it on the small example, I scaled it up and built the real thing. This is the infix input, or the list of tokens from earlier, this is the other track, and this is the postfix output. And this is all the logic to make it follow the rules of shunning yard. I literally took the algorithm from Wikipedia and converted every while loop, for loop, and if statement to a redstone equivalent. This was easily the most complex logic I've built in a long time. It might not look like much, but it took me three full days to do if you count all the debugging as well. But once it was done, it felt like magic. I was genuinely so proud of it. To show you an example, let's put in this expression. According to an online simulator, the corresponding postfix is 123 times 4.2 divide 19 plus times plus. When I press this button, it runs the algorithm. And I get this, the correct postfix. At this point, I was really happy, because the hardest parts of the calculator were done. I could type in any expression, tokenize it, and convert it to postfix. All I had left to do was really two things. Evaluate the postfix using the algorithm from earlier, and put the result on the screen. So the next thing I needed was the redstone circuits to do the five kinds of operations. I needed an adder, a unary subtractor, binary subtractor, multiplier, and a divider. Thankfully, my friend Amino already made almost all of these, and he let me use them. So huge thanks to him, this saved me a ton of time. The only one he didn't have was a divider, so I made that one from scratch with the help of my friend Katari. And now I had the circuits to do all five operations. Then I made a stack. With redstone, arguably the easiest way to make a stack is with a register that shifts in two opposite directions. Take this register for example, and imagine that this is the top of the stack. To push a number, I can just load it here and shift right. Push 1, push 2, push 3. Notice how the last thing I just pushed was a 3, so it's on the top of the stack. To pop a number off the stack, shift left. Pop 3, pop 2, pop 1. So I took this concept and scaled it up to make the real stack. And now I had everything I needed to do the evaluation. I spent another day making all the control logic and debugging, and eventually, it was done. When you press this button, it evaluates the entire postfix expression and puts the answer right here. Finally, the last thing I needed to do was put the answer on the display. Specifically, I needed a circuit to go from the fixed point answer to a list of digits. This is the opposite problem from the box I built earlier. 
Luckily, I've made this circuit many times, so I just had one in my schematics folder. Again, if you want to see the algorithms being used here, I put them in the description. If you put in 16 and an eighth and press convert, you get 00016.125. It always gives five digits for the integer and three digits for the fraction. I almost took this up to the display directly, but then I realized that the output needed some cleaning. For example, if the user types 1 plus 1, it would be kind of weird if they got 00002.000 for an answer. It would be better if they just got 2, or at the very least, 2.0. So to do this, I made a circuit to trim the unnecessary zeros. For the integer part, the circuit starts on the left and removes zeros until it finds the first non-zero digit. So 00002 becomes 2, or 00300 becomes 300. And if it's all zeros, I made sure to make it keep the last one, that way it doesn't remove all of them. Then for the fractional part, it's pretty much the same idea. Start from the right and remove zeros until you find a non-zero. So 2.100 becomes 2.1, or 2.010 becomes 2.01. And this time, if it's all zeros, I decided to remove it completely, as well as the decimal point. So 2.000 becomes just 2. Once that was done, I hooked it up to the display, and the calculator was, in theory, finished. But of course, it didn't work first try. Now that everything was hooked up and connected, I was in integration hell. Getting tokenization, shunning yard, evaluation, and outputting to all work together was literally horrible. There was one point where I regressed all the way back to 1 plus 1, and it still didn't work, and I genuinely felt like punching my monitor. But I didn't give up. I got 1 plus 1 to work, then 1 plus 2 plus 3, then this, then this, and eventually, even this. Which gave me enough confidence to say that the calculator was fully done. I'll see you in the showcase, and please stick around after that for a big announcement you don't want to miss. One of the most common questions I get on this channel is, hey Matt, what's the best way to learn redstone? And my response is usually something like, watch videos and practice, but I've never loved that answer. A better way to learn would be with an actual class, but that doesn't exist. Until now. I've been working with a company called Recess to make learning redstone as easy as possible. We've got two big offerings for you. First, we've got a beginner's class that'll teach you the basics of redstone. You'll have an actual teacher, class times, and assignments for you to track your progress. So if you've never done redstone before, or you've only done a little bit here and there, then this class is perfect for you. You'll be with a ton of other people all wanting to learn the exact same things as you. And then for the people who already know the basics, we've got an actively managed community for you. Kind of like Discord, except with way more benefits. You'll have tools to find people around your skill level, you'll have unlimited access to redstone experts, and I'll be hanging out there with you guys every week to build with you. On top of that, there will be a redstone challenge every month, and the winners will be featured in my next video. Last month in the trial run, we had a challenge to make the best redstone screen, and here's how it turned out. So if you want to be in my next video and have access to all these perks, then the advanced community is for you. Or again, if you're brand new and prefer something more structured, then there's the beginner class. And yeah, I really hope you guys are excited about this, and I'll see you there. The link in the description will take you to a landing page where you can sign up for either the beginner or advanced waitlist. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed. Peace out guys.